So the final part of the discussion of completion stage methods will focus on an example for how to handle runtime exceptions. And we'll take a look at a case study that will illustrate this. As usual, this case study is available in my GitHub repository, in the EX8 project, in the Java 8 folder, in my live lessons repository. So this particular example will show all three of the different ways to handle exceptions when completable futures are used. And here is a synopsis of where things will be generating exceptions. We're going to go ahead and call supply a sync to create a big fraction with the numerator of 100 and the denominator of something which could be zero. So of course, if the denominator is zero, an exception will be thrown, the arithmetic exception. If it's non-zero, then it'll create a big fraction with that as the denominator. Remember that an unhandled exception will terminate a program. You can learn more about that here. So we really don't want unhandled exceptions to be percolating out of the runtime thread that the exception occurred in. So we'll first, first start by showing how to use the handle method to handle exceptions or normal completions. And this is arguably the most common exception handling method for reasons you'll see in a second. So remember, we, we went over here and we created a completable future that when completed will either have a result or it will have an exception that was generated. So the handle method will handle the outcome of the previous stage. It's always called regardless of whether an exception is thrown or not. So as you can see here, it's passed two parameters, the result if all goes well, and the other result if an exception occurred. And these values are mutually exclusive. So if fraction equals null, that means that the exception occurred. And in this case, all we're going to do is just return big fraction zero just to keep things going. Right? It swallows the exception and will keep going, passing a zero back. Is that a good idea? Eh, maybe not, but that's what we're doing here just to illustrate how this works. Otherwise, if all went well and fraction was non-null, then we multiply the fraction by some constant, and that's the normal path, and that will continue to percolate up. In either case, whether we return to zero or the results of multiplying this, then we're going to return a value. So notice that we always return a value, and the value can actually change, and we can also change the type if we wanted to. We don't change the type here, but we, we could. But in this case, we're going to change the re return value in the case of an exception. And no matter what happens, we print the results as a mixed fraction, which will either print 0 as a mixed fraction or the result of multiplying the big fraction by the reduced fraction. OK, so that's the first approach we're going to look at. Key thing to remember, can handle both cases, both errors and normal processing, and also Remember that it swallows the exception, so it won't continue to percolate up the chain. Let's look at exceptionally next. Exceptionally is a little bit more concise, but it's also a bit more limited. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to have our supply async method do the same thing it did before. It either will return us a big fraction with 100 as the numerator and some denominator that's non-zero, or the arithmetic exception will be thrown if denominator is zero. If all goes well and there's no exception, then the then apply method will multiply the big fraction by the reduced big fraction. However, if an exception occurs, if arithmetic exception is called, for example, then this action will be run. So as I mentioned earlier, exceptionally is a bit like a catch clause in a Java try catch block. In other words, the control will transfer to it and it gets a chance to handle the exception. And in this case, what it's going to do is it's going to convert that exception to a zero. It's going to swallow the exception. Now, you know, normally you would log something as well, just so you don't just have exceptions disappearing uh, willy-nilly. But in this particular case, we are not worried about that. So it'll fit on one slide, basically. You could also use exceptionally async if the exception handling was to take a long time. Not a very common thing to do. It was added in Java 12, probably mostly just for symmetry more than anything else, but it's, it's just there if you need it, if you use Java 12 or beyond. And then the last thing we do is we display the results as a mixed fraction, which again will either be 0 if an exception occurred, or the multiplied big fraction if it didn't. The third and final technique here we're going to look at 
is when complete. And it's a little different than the other ones. It has some elements of handle, but not everything. This is called under both normal and exceptional conditions, like handle was. It's passed in two values, either the value if things went well or the exception if they didn't go well. These values are mutually exclusive. One of them will be null, one of them will not be null. They can't both be null, they can't both be non-null. In this case, if the fraction is non-null, in other words, if it's succeeded, then we go ahead and handle the normal case by printing it, the results as a mixed string, as a side effect. Otherwise, if it was null, if fraction was null and ex was non-null, we're going to print out the message associated with that particular exception. That's the reason why things went wrong, which in this case would say something like um, arithmetic exception or something like that, or divide by zero, probably. That would be the message that would come back. When complete is a bit like Java's peak method in the Java streams framework. It has a side effect, but it doesn't make any changes to the return value that comes out of it. It can't change the type, and it does not swallow the exception. And that can be a little bit confusing when you first try to use it, because you're like, well, wait a second. I had my when complete method in here, but my program keeps crashing when an exception is thrown. And the answer is that's correct. When complete is just like this method that's used for logging or debugging or something, and it doesn't really have and he changes to the program. It just notes the fact that something occurred. So that's the end of our coverage of runtime exceptions. We've now pretty much covered all of the completion stage methods that are part of the Java Completable Futures framework. You can see there's quite a number of them. It's about two thirds of the entire, of the entire Completable Futures API is completion stage methods. What remains to cover, which we'll cover next time, are the arbitrary Arity methods. And they are super cool. They're complicated to program, so we're going to encapsulate them with some wrappers. And you'll get a chance to play with those in your programming assignment as well.